Thanks for joining me again at the Paris Air Show, where electric aircraft are turning heads. Right behind me is Beta's Alia CX300 aircraft. We're going to be hearing from the company's founder, Kyle Clark, about what they're doing to bring this to market. So Beta's approach to getting these aircraft into commercial service is a little bit different. They're starting with a conventional takeoff and landing version of the aircraft. And the reason they're doing that is because they believe they can complete the certification process more quickly than for the full VTOL version that will come a little bit later. Today, we've also had some fresh news from Beta. Republic Airways has signed an agreement to take delivery of one of these Alia aircraft. It's going to use it to train its pilots and also to work out what sort of routes might be viable. The suggestion is that in the long term, Republic may take multiple examples of this aircraft and use them for a variety of cargo and passenger carrying versions. Thank you guys all for covering this thing that we find very, very important. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a passion of a whole lot of people at Beta. As you guys know, this is Aaliyah. This is our conventional takeoff and landing version. We have this version and a vertical takeoff and landing version. We just flew this here from Ireland through the UK, across the IRC, across the English Channel, and got clearance to fly here at the Paris Air Show, which, uh, what was, which was kind of the punchline of a rule that we set at Beta, which is we don't show up to an air show unless we fly the airplane there. So it was a driving force to get the airplane here and, uh, and a little bit about the aircraft. The aircraft has five batteries in the belly of it. It's got a dual redundant electric motor on the back. Everything about this aircraft is identical to the vertical takeoff and landing, except we omit the vertical lift props off this aircraft. And so our market entry strategy here is cargo, logistics, and passenger in CTOL, utilizing all that manufacturing and certification expertise into VTOL. And our belief is that actually puts us in market in VTOL passenger faster than anybody else in this space. This flight over here in Europe and a whole sequence of flights which end up in Norway, flying uh, a whole six months of missions, proving the reliability, utility, and most importantly, the economics. We just did some flights in, uh, in the US into JFK, flew from the Hamptons into JFK, and it was $7 of electricity, which is usually somewhere around $350 to $500 of fuel. So the economics of this is awesome. Our customers need to see it, to believe it, and so that's where Bristow is taking the aircraft and flying six months of missions to see the economics of it. Uh, we have our charging systems here. There's a small charger on the left. We have a 30 and a 60 kilowatt charger. That charger is just completing CE, which is uh, through TUV, a mark in Europe that allows us to have a certified charger in Europe. Last year, we completed UL certification on that charger. We have a network all through the US and we're launching out of Ireland to build a network into Europe. That little plug right there is the same plug you use to start a jet through a auxiliary uh, power converter. That's what that plugs into. So now we get to put that in the back of the airplane, land at any airport, charge it up and keep going. And people ask us all the time, how did you stop at 80 airports in the US? Well, we do it by putting that charger either in the plane or having a pre-position, plus the network that we're on. A couple quick things about the airplane and then we'll get on to see. That motor you see over there, H500A, that's our first major certification program. It's a dual redundant motor. That, that has 575 horsepower peak, 400 uh, horsepower continuous, five-bladed prop for noise. And then the cargo volume here. So don't take a picture of me because I'm 250 pounds and 6'7", <laughs> but this cargo volume here is roughly equivalent to what a free-packed Sprinter van is. So now when UPS or Amazon brings cargos to cargo to where they're going. This thing's chock full, 200 cubic feet, and the package density has been tuned to match that 200 cubic feet, 1,250 pounds, five to six pounds per cubic foot. That all comes out and goes in a van for distribution. The shelf height here matches the bell height. All of that thoughtful engineering goes into making this a cargo and logistics airplane. This is the, uh, the launch of the Garmin G3000 Prime here, um, where we actually have partitioned software to do the fly-by-wire system, the batteries, and all the propulsion. 
So all those synoptics have been reviewed by the FAA and put into this aircraft first. So the, uh, the exciting part about today is uh, we just executed an agreement with Republic Airlines to provide a very similar aircraft to this to start crew training this year in the U.S. at all of their relevant routes, leaning into identifying the routes that they're going to launch our aircraft on. Uh, so this is going to be for both cargo and passenger aircraft, and it's starting with CTOL and will go to VTOL aircraft. So this is a, a big, a big uh, deal for us to get into that executed agreement. Uh, it is an MOU. And uh, and they're they're taking uh, taking the aircraft to start crew training. How many uh, aircraft are we talking about to start with? Um, we're talking about a lot of aircraft, and we we can't quite say a number yet. Okay. Um, but look, in Beta's classic form, um, we believe that the start of these things isn't selling an aircraft. We have to start by getting the aircraft in their hands starting the flights, training their pilots, validating their routes, seeing the economy in both the energy and the maintenance, or the lack of the maintenance, and, uh, and moving, on to, uh, moving on to the formal deployment. But I believe that this, this strategy right here puts us in front of all the rest of the AAM market by actually flying with our customers' pilots. And as you do all these very varied flights into JFK, yeah. uh, from Ireland, through Europe, I guess you could call that real world experience. Are you made, managing to make the various regulators more comfortable because you're demonstrating yeah. more to them than if you just stayed in Vermont? One hundred percent. I mean, I just got down from Cologne at the EASA FAA safety conference, yeah. and this was exactly the point. We're flying at night. IFR flying across the Irish Sea over the waves with a 45 knot headwind, right? We're, we're doing real world flying. We're flying into Atlanta. We're flying into JFK. These are the things that give people confidence because initially they're like, hey, we've got a bunch of jets setting up for the, the RNAV 13 into JFK. They're like, can you keep 130 knots? on the way in. Sure, no problem, right? They want to know that you can fly those routes without screwing up the balance of traffic. They want to know that we can get in and out of icing safely. Like, this has to be certificated for inadvertent icing encounter. All of the inadvertent icing encounter uh, systems on here have to be in play in order to safely fly an IFR. The one nobody talks about that is absolutely pervasive in the design is lightning strike. This aircraft has to be certificated for direct strike of light, lightning in the Class A, which is the tip of the propeller through the shaft of the motor, grounded through the batteries and exiting, tip of the wings, this whole metallic structure on the front, and there's a copper mesh over the whole airplane. Static discharge and lightning strike, and I, I'll say that because I don't believe any of our competitors are making an IFR aircraft, and it's not just the instruments to make it IFR. It's a holistic airframe design that inverter in that motor back there, a third of the mass in that motor is to carry 300,000 amps through transorbs, Y caps, and dissipation to make that motor continue to run after it gets a direct strike and of lightning. What good to plane that can only go, go VFR. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Um, so just high level back home, we've opened our production facility. Uh, we're flying every day with multiple aircraft. We've launched our passenger aircraft. And that's the one that's flying around New York. It has a whole bunch of stops around the United States this year. Um, and the, back to your question, sir, that's getting people confidence of flying with the aircraft. And it's flying on a market survey ticket that allows us to do sales demonstrations. Sheridan over here flew in the aircraft with a bunch of uh, a bunch of customers and um, and do training flights and do evaluation flights in many different environments. Uh, so the production facility is up and running. You know, we're making TIA conforming articles, um, and those are going. They're repeating the tests that we've already done <laughs> on engineering models that are identical.